Welcome to Bloombox Growing Deeper. I'm Sarah. I'm Hannah. And we're on a mission to help you become the gardener you want to be. Hello, gardeners. This is Sarah. I am introducing this episode alone because we are doing something a little different today. Last week was Nebraska Wildflower Week. And at the Nebraska Statewide Arboretum, we have always celebrated this uh, first week of June by traveling out to western Nebraska and spending time with our partners, our members, our affiliate sites, projects who are receiving grant funds, and looking at wildflowers both um, in our state parks and in, uh, in our towns in the places that we have managed to plant them in projects. So uh, we just wanted to share our trip with you. We took some time along the way to record little messages with some of the people that we visited and we hope you enjoy them. So um, since Hannah's going to wrap this episode up, I will go ahead and share my flower of the week. And that is uh, Penstemon grandiflora, which I saw blooming in the ditches all the way from Ogallala to Scotts Bluff. Um, It was so beautiful. It's got the biggest uh, leaves that are kind of a silver gray, silver green, I guess, and big purple flowers. And sometimes you see one or two little spikes of purple, and sometimes you see this whole side of a ditch just pink. Um, And it's pretty special to get to see that bloom. the rain out west really made the wildflowers pop this week in a way that they uh, haven't for a few years during our travels. So I hope you enjoy our photos, our conversations, and I hope you found a way to enjoy some wildflowers around you. Hello, everybody. I am here with Bob Henriksen, who you all have met already. Bob is a staff member of the Nebraska Statewide Arboretum, just like me and Sarah. And we are at Shadron State Park today because we're out here for Wildflower Week. As you all know, that you're on the road with NSA for Wildflower Week this uh, episode of Bloombox Growing Deeper. So I wanted to sit down and talk with Bob so that we could get a little bit of history on Wildflower Week because you have a mind of steel and you know all of this information. <laughs> so let's get it I hope recorded. I do. I don't know, man. I'll <laughs> right. try. So yeah, can you tell us a little bit about how Wildflower Week started and why? You know, I can honestly say I can take claim to starting Wildflower Week. This is a brainchild of mine. This was back in 2008 is when the proclamation was made. Uh, Our former director, Jim Locklear, approached Governor Dave Heineman at the time and, you know, uh, introduced this proclamation to him and he signed it in as a proclamation to state to celebrate the first full week of June as Nebraska Wildflower Week. And the idea was to celebrate the wildflowers that are out there in nature, but also think about putting those wildflowers in your own home landscape. So it was really about, uh, you know, setting a week aside to to celebrate Nebraska's wildflowers and why we chose early June. You know, it, it, when people think of prairie and when it looks to the best on the wildflowers, they often take a September, right. you know, and October mm-hmm. when the prairie grasses are doing the thing and that's great. But we chose early June because out here in the Panhandle and uh, Western Nebraska, that's really when the wildflowers are shining. Certainly you can see wildflowers in the summer and fall too, but you, you kind of have that explosion of spring color uh, with that early week in June. So that's why the date was chosen. And again, uh, you know, celebrating, you know, conserving those wildflowers because, you know, a lot of our prairies, certainly in the Eastern part of the state have been plowed up. And I think people thought, well, can I just drive on the roadside and see wildflowers? Well, not necessarily. So, but there are prairie remnants in the eastern part of the state. But here, out here in the Panhandle, the Sand Hills, it's one big prairie garden, right? Yeah, and yeah. so, uh, you know, I encourage you to just get on Nebraska's byways and visit Nebraska state parks and botanize a little bit and, and and learn about the plants. And I challenge people: you may not know wildflowers, you may not know what it is but you learned what some of those typical garden plants are, right? You know what daylilies are, you know what iris are, 
but do you know Shelley Penstemon, right? Do you know the upright prairie cone flower? So I challenge people, just learn a few every year. That's all you have mm -hmm. to do, and pretty soon you're going to know more than you think. Right, and we were doing radio interviews earlier this morning, and you had some uh, handy tips of books and guides yeah, to use. Yeah. What are some good ones people could check out? Sure, sure. Yeah, you know, for the really kind of the Bible I learned from is uh, John Farrar. He was with the uh, Game and Parks Commission, and he did a book called Wildflowers of Nebraska. It's a great one, a reference mm -hmm. book to get. I have that one. It's yeah. perfect. Yeah, yeah. it's a perfect one to start with because he color codes them. Mm -hmm. So if you're seeing a yellow flower, you can go to the yellow section and look it up and try to figure out what you're looking at, right? And, of course, we have apps now to check those right. things out, too. They're not always correct. So I encourage people to check out that Wildflowers of Nebraska. But as you get further west in the state, some great reference guys. A, a lady did a, a great book on the wildflowers of the Wildcat Hills. That's a great reference book because then if you're out hiking around, say, what, the Wildcat Hills or uh, Scotts Bluff Monument or Agate Fossil Beds or getting up into the Pine Ridge and the mm -hmm. Shadron area, uh, that reference guide pretty much includes the wildflowers for that whole region, right? Yeah. From Kimball County on up north. Um, and then there's another one uh, that comes out of South Dakota, uh, Wildflowers of South Dakota. And that's a great crossover reference guide because you'll see the same species uh, in this region that they're uh, highlighting in that reference too. So I think those three are, are a good place to start. Mm -hmm. and one of the things we were talking about on the drive over to the park was how a lot of people are sleeping on Western Nebraska. They're yeah. not coming out here to see, and we're sitting here in Shadron state park and first of all the birds are it's right. like a cacophony yes, yes. it's the loudest i've heard in a while and it's just gorgeous yeah. uh i guess we would encourage everyone to come yeah. check it out yeah and it's funny on the radio the guy was talking about you know they're two inches above normal like like the lushness we're seeing out here right now was what with seven inches of moisture yeah because yeah, they're used to like 14 total for the year so they're mm -hmm. a little above normal so yeah you might come out and go well it's so dry well that's that's it's it's a western landscape you know mm -hmm. it's it's uh high country gardening it's it's uh it's just a unique location in nebraska unique topography in nebraska and a lot of people think well, aren't we a flyover state? Well, you got to get off the interstate. Yeah, and you, absolutely. And I encourage anyone, if you haven't been out to the Panhandle, to include part of your vacation. Because usually you'll head south from I-80 to go to Colorado and more power to you. Or you'll bypass Nebraska and, and go right up to the Black Hills, mm -hmm. you know, because everybody loves the Black Hills. But, you know, spend a day or two out in western Nebraska, you know. You know, if you haven't been to the top of Scotts Bluff Monument, that's yep. definitely a go-to. Agate fossil beds, rich in history. Uh, you know, I'm, when I was a kid and our parents, when we go on vacation, they would drag us around to museums and I would be like <laughs> rolling my eyes going, Ugh, I just want to get on a hiking trail or mm -hmm. climb a mountain or something, right? I don't want to go to some yeah. museum. But now I, I really love the history, so it's steeped in history out here. So mm -hmm. you've got a, a history lesson as well as an immersion in nature lesson right. too. So. Uh, just beautiful country out in the Pine Ridge. So, uh, it, and there's some great hiking trails to take. Obviously, not only Shadron State Park, our our, our first state park in the state, which just celebrated its hundredth year. They're hundred. They're right? going to celebrate 102 this weekend. Yeah, 102 yeah. this weekend. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, it being around that long and. Yeah, and like I say, you'll discover some trails that just uh, drop drop your jaw gorgeous. Yeah. Um, you know, like uh, there's uh, Fort Robinson, too, yep. is a great place oh. to stay. And, and the history there. The history yeah. there. You know, there's certainly some ha sad history there, too. But it's it, But it's still some history that's it's history that's that important to learn. Exactly. Right? So we don't make those same mistakes, obviously. Yeah. But... Uh, but yeah, from from you know the uh, you know 1879, the last skirmish with Native Americans that, that took place. I mean, Crazy Horse was mm -hmm. a, a, certainly a part of Fort Robinson, and uh, again, a sad tale there. But yeah, I just uh, really encourage you to make it out this way and make it a part of your of your uh, plans for either a vacation or just uh, you know spending a day here. Yeah. You know, my husband and I are plan trying to plan something. We're going to come out and, and hike and camp and things. But he needs a little bit, something to lift his spirit sometimes. So we're going to include a brewery tour right, along right. the way. You know, <laughs> you know uh, there's a ton of good breweries exactly, out this way too. Exactly, yeah. And, uh -huh. and people might say, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and great, vineyards. Great food, yeah. vineyards. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah, it's just a great vacation spot. Yeah, yeah. So come, if 
If you're not doing it this year, come join us next year for Wildflower Week. Yeah. First full week in June. That's right. Every year. We'll be here. That's right. We might not leave Shadow and State Park. Right. Right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Come and find All right. Hello, everyone. I am here with Rachel Allison. Rachel, can you give us your title and where we're at? Hi, everyone. I'm Rachel Allison. I'm the Western Area Forester with the Nebraska Forest Service located in North Platte. And we are standing in the Glen V. Meyer Arboretum of the Nebraska Statewide Arboretum. And today we're seeing beautiful flowers everywhere. Right, it is gorgeous today. We're out here for wildflower week, so it's the very first stop on our tour. And uh, the gardens here and the Arboretum are just gorgeous. So what kind of things do we have planted here? Well, what we're seeing in bloom right now is there's um, poppies, uh, ornamental or oriental, uh, or oriental poppy, I think, I think is yeah. what it's called. Irises are still in bloom. We also saw some beautiful columbine. It's already June. June 7 but we are we've had a, a longer rainy cooler spring so we're enjoying that but yarrow's coming up um, lots of greenery uh, so a lot of pretty stuff is happening right now yeah it's kind of the same that we've noticed and we talked about in a podcast episode a couple weeks ago is that everything's a bit delayed this year I think throughout the state with um, a cooler spring really dry winter except you guys got a lot more moisture but it's it's been it's been off a bit correct it was slow to start mm -hmm. and typically we might get <clears throat> april showers but this year we had a lot of good may showers mm -hmm. which has really helped and we're seeing a lot of things in bloom uh, even around the state mm -hmm. that hadn't uh come up before but i just noticed i'm looking at some nine bark in bloom too so but we had beautiful red buds earlier and uh, looking forward to, we've got, um, oh, I just drew a blank. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Lots of cool stuff. So if people wanted to come visit the Arboretum, can they come and stop by and walk yes. around? And can you tell them a little bit about that? Yes. We have this memorial garden that is very accessible, uh, just on a chipped path to uh, go around and take a, have a picnic lunch here. The site is actually right near um, Highway 83 and State Farm Road. So it's south of North Platte. If you're familiar with it, you'll go past the Menards. And then, so we're in the southwest corner of that intersection. You can kind of navigate into a parking area. And then, so as we stand here, you know, we can hear the highway noise, but we're very close to it. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Rachel, for being here. Thank you. Hi, everyone. This is Sarah. I am at the Evergreen House in Gearing. If you remember, we planted here last year a bioswale, and everyone's busy planting again. But I snuck a minute with Amy from the city of Gearing. Amy, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit and then tell us what you love about Wildflower Week? Yes. Hi, everybody. My name is Amy Seiler, and I'm the Director of Parks, Recreation, and Leisure Services for the City of Gearing. And I, uh, Sarah and I are sitting here hanging out in the shade while everybody else is planting during Wildflower Week. You should hear all the sounds of activity and um, excitement as they are starting to install these incredible beds that community forester Chrissy Land has designed for this project. I love it. Yeah, we love coming out. Every Wildflower Week, um, we visit the Panhandle, but that always means Scott's Bluff and Garing. And it's so fun because you've been planting projects with the Forest Service and NSA for how many years out here? Um, it actually has been 14 years. 14 years. So we have 14 years of native plants and trees to visit and learn. For I always like to come out here and take an evening alone and go look at projects because it teaches me how plants behave out here. And it makes me better at designing for western Nebraska. I think that the, this Wildflower Week is so important, and particularly these projects we do. Oftentimes, I'm introduced to a new plant that I have never heard of before and we incorporate it into a lot of these projects and we have the opportunity to observe it and see how it will perform and the other really fun thing that I love about wildflower week is 
when we'll do the wildflower tours around the monument. Mm -hmm. And there's Bob Henriksen, and uh, they we just have a great time looking at things that you often don't see in the nursery industry and kind of geeking out over it, getting really excited because, oh my gosh, I've never seen that before. Or, I've never seen it do this, or wow, it really can get this big. Or So I this, this week is just full of learning and friendships reunited, so this is a pretty special week for me. Yeah, if after 14 years you're still learning new plants, everybody else should have a lot of hope for themselves. They don't need to know all the plants now. And it, those hikes are so important to us because they challenge us in our growing because there's so many wildflowers that we do grow for you guys, but there's so many we haven't figured out how to grow in pots. Um, they don't like the greenhouse. They don't like plants. They don't like seed propagate. Who knows? And Western Nebraska is full of those, and we have to challenge ourselves more to figure out how to get um, some of those native plants usable because they solve problems. Um, it were at this bioswale that we planted at the Evergreen House. It's mostly pretty wet, but there's a dry corner. And we were thinking, if we could have this that grows on the monument, it'd do great. Well, how do we get that plant? <laughs> how do we get that plant? So it's fun to challenge ourselves that way and then just see the things that will never grow in our gardens. That if we don't conserve some of our native areas, we don't have that plant because it's never going to grow in our gardens. Right. We're, we're, missing, we're missing out on those if we, we don't try to bring them into our planned spaces because mm -hmm. those um, native spaces are shrinking more and more all the time. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it was a hard trip to take a minute in the shade with me, but thank you for talking to us. <laughs> oh, I will come back anytime, Sarah. Thank you so much. And thanks for being out here to improve our community landscape. It's so important to us. It is. And it's important to us that we get to work with people like you because we don't get to start these projects. We can just show up and help with them. So We, we love it. We'll take you whenever we can get you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm out here enjoying the last day of Wildflower Week. It's a good walk and hike in Wilderness Park in Lincoln with my puppy, Alistair. Thank you all for joining us on this wonderful Wildflower Week trip. We hope that next year, if you want to, that you'll join us in person because why wouldn't you, right? It's an amazing trip that we've had. Uh, Sarah reminded me that I needed to do what's blooming this week. So what isn't blooming really is my question because in my yard we have all kinds of things blooming. Purple poppy mallow is going nuts right now. Um, I have wood mint and columbine back for round two. My baptisia is starting to bloom. So there's all kinds of good stuff. Out here in Wilderness Park, there's gorgeous stuff all around me because it's a beautiful Sunday morning with a little bit of rain coming down, a little bit cooler. Everything's lush and green. So whether it's wildfire week or not, I encourage you to get outside and enjoy some time in the wild. Thank you for listening to Bloombox Growing Deeper. Don't forget to rate and review us wherever you are listening right now. Tell your friends about us. Share us on social media. Join us on social media. Send in your questions anytime. We'd love to answer them. And as a reminder, Bloombox and Bluebox Growing Deeper are both programs of the Nebraska Statewide Arboretum.